I think the North Koreans are trying to achieve um, some of the, the similar um, outcomes that many other countries try and achieve with their uh, foreign policy. Um, so that would be um, recognition in the international community. Um, there may be some um, goals related to domestic stability, domestic prestige. Um, and also there may be a sense of genuine threat amongst the North Korean uh, regime, which means or which is pushing them towards the development and the continuation of this nuclear program. Trying to understand which of these elements is the most important to the regime is, is a very difficult task. Um, so in some ways I think it's more important to perhaps focus on how we react to what is happening in, in North Korea than, than trying to uh, second guess why some of the North Korean leaders are, are taking um, this particular or these, these stances. He is a new leader himself. He faces a new leader in South Korea. Um, and he's faced a new round of sanctions and pressure as a result of his uh, um, nuclear and missile tests. I think what he's been trying to do is to demonstrate, particularly to his counterpart in South Korea, President Trump, the limits of America's capacity to support South Korea. Now, the last time there was a sort of a cycle of escalating um, uh, threats and aggravation between the North and the South uh, back in 2010, 2011, uh, the United States made great play of promising South Korea that if North Korea behaved like this again, they would have unambiguous, rock-solid American support, including strong implication, military support. Uh, so essentially what, what, uh, what the North Koreans are doing at the moment is r r rattling the sabre, ratcheting up the tension, and saying, so to speak, to America, so what are you going to do about this? What, what, how are you going to respond to this? And what the answer, the answer is, the United States has got nothing it can do. But the fact, of course, the United States is immensely powerful, but it does not have the capacity to respond to North Korea's attacks in kind without imposing higher costs on itself than it imposes on North Korea. It does not have, in old-fashioned nuclear strategic terms, it does not have what we used to call in Cold War escalation control. So, it, you know, it, it, it can. What it's been trying to do over the last few few weeks is as North Korea ups the tension, they've been upping the tension. So North Korea rattles the, rattles the cage and Americans send a couple of, you know, B-2 bombers for, from the United States and that sort of thing. Deploys more ships, conducts more exercises. But over the last week or so, it's become apparent that the United States has started to step back from that because they started getting worried that the North Koreans were going to go further than they wanted to go. So the, the, North, the North Koreans have succeeded in demonstrating to America, but more important from North Korea's point of view, to Seoul, to South Korea, that they can't, uh, that the United States can't protect them from North Korean aggravation unless and until it gets to the stage of a full-scale war. Now, I don't, I don't think for a moment that North Korea has, has intended uh, to launch any substantial attack. They might launch a sort of a provocation type attack but no substantial attack. That, I, I don't think there's any reason to fear that North Korea is dumb enough to actually start a war. What it does want to do is to demonstrate that its position is stronger than people in the South or people in Washington might think. And I think they've actually demonstrated that quite successfully. If, if the crisis cools off from now, uh, they will have had a win. Obviously, this isn't anything new. Uh, it's been a pattern that's gone on for a very long time, and particularly under... Kim Jong-un's father, Kim Jong-il, uh, there were repeated phases when North Korea moved into kind of bellicose mode, particularly following um, joint exercises between the United States and South Korea. Uh, but this time it does seem to be a bit different. It seems to have gone on uh, rather longer and become more and more extreme. Um, I can't, I think nobody can make any kind of definite statement about what this is all about. Uh, but there are various interesting possibilities that we can think about. And one of the one of the things that struck me as being interesting is the fact that in the middle of all this um, you know warlike talk and so on, um, the North Korean government promoted uh, Park Bongju, who is known as a, a, an economic reformer and was one of the people who tried to introduce economic reforms under Kim Jong-il. Um, so that got me wondering whether Kim Jong-un has certainly tried to 
push economic reform from time to time. And clearly you must know that North Korea is in a terrible situation economically. One possibility is that he would like, on the one hand, to try and push some kind of reform, but on the other hand, uh, realises that in order to do that, he's got to have the military on side, he's got to get all the, all the people working together, um, and he feels that he can do that by talking about the military rhetoric and the external threat. So it could be a kind of, in a sense, part of a, a more balanced strategy. The only problem is that Kim Jong-un is so young and inexperienced, and to do something like that successfully, you really need to know what you're doing. And my sense is that he's started going down this war talk path with the idea that it's going to get him somewhere. But he hasn't thought of the way out. Kim Jong-un um, is a very ambitious man. He believes that he can do something what his father and grandfather couldn't do. So maybe we should listen to what, what were the failures of uh, Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il's agenda. Uh, first, neither of his predecessors could achieve the diplomatic recognition of North Korea. North Korea was trying to sign a peace treaty with the United States since 1974. The United States is silent still about it. Uh, they, they failed to uh, have the international sanctions uh, removed. Although Kim Jong-un managed to have North Korea removed from the list of terrorism-sponsored states. But still, plenty of sanctions, and more and more sanctions are coming after the nuclear tests and uh, ballistic missile launches. They, men, they uh, I'm talking about Kim Il-sung and Kim Jong-il, could not um, convince the United States to give them a security assurance. Although under Kim Il-sung there were some attempts to freeze the nuclear uh, programs and the armistice, sorry, and the Mm, and the uh, framework agreement uh, was signed in 1994, which worked for some time under the um, Clinton administration. But still, the issue of continuing war and continuing sanctions and continuing threat of um, forced regime change in, in North Korea persists. Kim Jong-un is trying to address this issue. He, he feels like he wants to solve all the problems at once, but it looks like he doesn't see the core of the problem and the core of the problem is that the regime cannot change. The cha change North Korea is uh, dissolve North Korea, because uh, such kind of regime can survive only in isolation and in uh, perpetual crisis. And this is what Kim Jong-un is creating. Every launch, every nuclear test creates more isolation for North Korea. And also he creates uh, the sense of threat from outside, explaining to his people that they are surrounded by the enemies. And, they, and that they have to consolidate around, around him, around Kim Jong-un, to feel safe. So whether people trust him or not, that's another issue. So time is you know, passing by and more and more people realize that they're being cheated and deceived. 60 years of lies don't, don't, do any, don't add any, any credit to Kim Jong-un and the whole Kim's family. People are getting tired of shortage of food, of shortage of electricity, uh, so miserable life and constant threat from domestic uh, secret police. Uh, so the situation of Korea is pretty difficult. And so to keep people uh, isolated, ignorant, and docile, Kim Jong Un must create uh, continuing crisis, and that's what he's doing.